Hello and welcome to the Habit Coach podcast. I'm Ashton Doctor, your Habit Coach. Now today we have a very interesting podcast. We're going to be talking about understanding what person's journey through a dramatic change that took place and all the different things she's done so far to understand it better and then kick ass in life. So join me in welcoming Megha Gupta to the Habit Coach podcast. Now I met Megha in Goa I think uh, last year and we had a fantastic discussion and we tried different biohacking things so there are two episodes this first one is about her journey and the second one is going to be about biohacking mega welcome to the happy coach podcast thank you so much ashton thank you uh, finally it's happening we've <laughs> tried to schedule this podcast for the last two three times and it's failed so if you're listening to this consider yourself a lucky person all right mega can you just tell the audience a little bit about yourself hmm That's a question I'm finding an answer to still Ashton but uh, since we are talking about biohacking in my journey um <clears throat> I um I'm a girl and I used to act in Bombay till I got diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and I decided to move to Goa about 4 years ago and I stumbled across this concept this word called biohacking and uh, I should look at you right Correct. Yeah, sorry this is my first <laughs> that's what she said <laughs> so uh, <clears throat> some stumbled across this concept called biohacking through a friend and started uh, researching about it started studying it started understanding how it may help me and then I started applying um, the principles to my daily life and I was slowly able to bring my uh, blood glucose down by large numbers glucose management became very well I started thriving i started putting on muscle which i was struggling with uh, without biohacking so uh, that's something i started doing and i think that's why we are here to have a conversation about that journey in biohacking so so let me know about your life before the type 1 diabetes what was that typically like what was your lifestyle like what was your <coughs> life like back then uh so i i would say there were three phases there was my life and then the life that happened when i got diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and then there was my life with biohacking and type 1 diabetes correct so if we talk about the middle part that the first part before that <coughs> sorry the first part was uh, pretty good actually a very nice life touch wood you know great childhood and loving parents and fun stuff and great bonds and connections and uh, great education and i i literally have that typical story of being Uh, spotted and asked to act and i declined twice and then the third time i have no idea how i got that download which said you know what many people at the age of 18 would die to be in your position and so if you're getting acting offers don't say no and so i didn't to the third one and started doing a daily soap and then i uh, finished that and got back to uh, doing a 9 to 5 job but offers kept pouring in and so then i eventually became an actor and i actually wanted to be a copywriter i wanted to write commercials oh wow yeah and uh, acting happened and i said you know what i'll figure the rest out right now if the universe is offering me this i'll take it and i was really hard working at that and i did a good job i think and then i got diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and that's when things changed and i decided to leave bombay and move out i was always a small town girl farm life and i was like okay now this is a sign it's time to move uh, bombay is taken a lot from from me and given me a lot as well but now it's time to leave and then i moved to goa and i started biohacking and that was a revelation in itself i slowly understood what my body was capable of and the science and the technique behind it and it's been a great journey so far so when you were diagnosed with type 1 diabetes it must have come out of the blue right you would have no idea that this something was taking place what made you check what made you go in for that first blood test was it an accidental thing was it something that a doctor prescribed what happened i basically had all the textbook symptoms and this is a great question because this is something i do not know as i had nobody who was diagnosed with diabetes in my family so i did not know these were textbook symptoms and i'm so i'm going to lay them out here so that you know if you're listening to me this might help i was constantly thirsty i would drink water like eight times in in the night i would constantly want to pee i would use the washroom like again seven eight times in the night i had lost a lot of weight i was constantly hungry and i had a uti which wasn't getting better and i had never had uti before 
and it lasted for nearly a month and a half two months and so we were going to the doctor for my mom's checkup and we casually mentioned to the doctor that you know i have a uti which isn't getting better and she was like you're diabetic and i was like what no way and she's like i'm telling you i can see your diabetic get your glucose checked and we did and it turned out to be a number of 467 which in uh, the diabetic world is high you would be at a good 100 you know 80 to 100 is a good number to be at and my mom couldn't believe it she's like ye machine kharab hai this machine is not working and i don't believe this and let's get tested through another machine and we did and then another machine and we were like okay this is real and this is really happening and then we ran a couple of more tests and figured that i was a type 1 not just a type 2 i was a type 1 the more rare autoimmune disease and that's when more blood work tests and this entire you know like things just fell on me and i finally opened my laptop and i was like okay what is diabetes wow so because like i said i mentioned nobody in my family was diabetic so it was a language very alien to me i knew these words like insulin glucose are sugar high sugar high hai. Hmm. usko sugar ho gaya <laughs> correct so that's when i started researching and how did you know it was type 1 and not type 2 because they are two completely different forms of diabetes You are so right you know Ashton actually i feel like type 1 diabetes should not even be called the same word correct type 2 diabetes and type 1 diabetes are so different 1% of the diabetic population is a type 1 diabetic it's that rare and if i was a type 2 by now i'm pretty sure knowing my strength in and my confidence in my own self i would have healed myself but type 1 is <clears throat> as they say on paper uh an autoimmune which is lifelong So how I knew was when we ran some more tests uh the doctors were like do the GABA test which will establish if you are a type 1 or a 1.5 or a 2 and that's when we established I was a 1.5 actually. What's the 1.5? This is the first time I'm hearing a 1.5. Yeah, it's interesting it's when your body is kind of sort of making insulin hmm. but not but it's not a type 2 but it's not a type 1 and it's kind of It's like as the population is increasing, as science is making more progress, we're able to establish that there are various forms of diabetes, mm. and so there is a type one. So a type one diabetes, the body does <coughs> not make any insulin, correct, or makes a very little amount of insulin. Very little amount. Right. A type a one point five, there'll be a little more insulin that being that is being produced, correct. Sorry, did you say type one is? Type one is no insulin. No insulin, mm. correct. Type one mm. is no insulin. One point five is less insulin. Very little in, very fluctuating, yeah. Correct. And type two is completely different. Has nothing to do with the insulin in this context completely, right? right? So, um, when you found out about this, what is the doctor? What did the doctor say? And what was <laughs> the general mahal at home? It it's a very <clears throat> it's a bit of a hazy time for me. It was also it was. my mom was very upset and uh, the doctors uh, we were you know that typical story ki ek doctor se dusre doctor pe khatkata rahe hain aur puch rahe hain kya hoga and everybody was like aapko to insulin lena padega and i was i spoke to my brother and he was like don't take insulin once you take it you'll get dependent on it let's heal this naturally so it's there are so many different schools of thought and then they all come out and play somebody will be like let's go to that yogi somebody will be like go hug tree somebody will be like just take insulin somebody will be like, get admitted it was very confusing very bewildering and <clears throat> to see my mom also in pain because suddenly i was a diabetic which <clears throat> sorry and people would look at me and say aap to itne fit ho aap to itne patle ho aap to kitna workout karte ho aapko diabetes kaise ho gaya and so it was very painful for me as well because my gift to the world is trying to make them healthy all right and suddenly i was like how can i be a health advocate if my own body is damaged and that was a difficult pill to swallow as well so it was all very confusing bewildering sad frustrating couldn't understand couldn't get any answers yeah i think when something like this happens exactly what you said right it's an identity crisis that suddenly takes place you know the whole who am i that you started the podcast with hmm. again happens at that point of time because you're saying that this is what my life was now i don't think my life is going to be the same yeah right it's an identity shift that has to take place and you almost go through probably the same you know kinds of self doubt you <laughs> go through all those elements of uh, you know grief that happen hmm yes you're so right it's uh, a major identity crisis and then you question everything you know you're like how can i tell people to go do a workout where after doing all that workout i'm still 
टाइप वन डायबिटिक लाइक हाउ डिड दैट हैपन एंड स्पेशली वीन पीपल से आप तो कितने फिट हो दे आई एम थिंकिंग वेर डिड आई गो रॉन्ग मेरे प्यार में कहाँ कमी रह गई थी सो यार वॉट वॉज इट दाइट इट रॉक डिड यू फिगर आउट वॉट कॉज द ऑट इम्यून कंडीशन वॉज इट अ ट्रिगर वॉज द समथिंग दैट वॉज अ लाइफ स्टाइल थिंग दैट कॉज दट डिड यू डू एनी पोस्टमार्टम ऑन इट I did and honestly I still haven't found the answer because I was recently at a health retreat and I was you know I had questions and they were like forget genetics forget everything you have it you have it there's no answer sometimes you just have it and that's the thing with genetics like it could not happen for generations and then it would suddenly show up hmm. I my personal <clears throat> take on my uh, life situation is that I put my body and mind <clears throat> under extreme stress and when we go through stress it does affect some part of you and in my case my pancreas were affected so that's my take on it and i do feel i do believe that's true my brain in its thought in its overthinking in its pain grief trauma made my pancreas shut down temporarily hmm. it is a psychosomatic thing that takes place right your brain is saying something because of the stress your mind is at play and that manifest somewhere in the body yes right a large part of the autoimmune conditions that take place are psychosomatic in in yes. nature have you read any of the autoimmune books autoimmune fix autoimmune solution any of those no no oh these. must must they brilliant okay. books that are there you know i highly suggest them to anyone who has an autoimmune condition wow okay i must, must. Read. i will i'll send you one copy it's really nice thank you thank okay. you okay so when you think about this right so there was this point where type 1 diabetes happened right then the doctors were saying something family was saying something everyone was giving the two bits it's like you know when you have a baby everyone wants to tell you how to you know raise that baby mm-hmm. complete confusion how did you decide on this path that you chose next oh through a lot of fumbling and a lot of experimentation and a lot of pain and a lot of confusion i when i got diagnosed i decided not to take insulin immediately and bring it down naturally and i went to this yogi who i was recommended and he said hug trees have bowls of fruit and everything which i kind of believed in i do believe in the energy of trees and i did what he asked me to do grounding anyways yes very good so did all of that and then my cousin was coming down from delhi and he was coming home and he was like should i get you something from shiv sagar i'm stopping by and i'm like you know what okay get me two samosas i've not had samosas in a while and he being a delhiite punjabi got me six samosas and che chaat papdis and da 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 and lo behold my glucose shot up to 600 and i got a little bit of a panic attack because somebody had told me after 500 you could go into a diabetic coma so then i was rushed to the hospital and at and which hospital i won't mention but i was given uh, insulin and uh, I was kept in the hospital for 3 days to monitor my insulin consumption and my carb consumption based on which I would be given my insulin dosage that I will have when I get home. They fed me white bread sandwiches Ashton. They fed me poha. You and I had this conversation on the phone, you know, my blood was boiling when I was telling you this. And based on that carb consumption, they gave me this much insulin. I come back home, I'm having brown bread sandwiches, I'm having eggs, so my carb consumption is this, my insulin is this. I went through a roller coaster I'm getting goosebumps as I say this. I went through a roller coaster of hypoglycemia which is low sugar and hyperglycemia which is high sugar. And then I became a victim to myself and I became a sadist to myself because then I was waiting to get a hypoglycemia because then I could eat all the chocolates and ice creams that I couldn't. And because I got that opportunity I would would stuff my face with all these things playing victim and then I my glucose would shoot up and then I would cry myself and have the insulin and sometimes as a rebel not even have that insulin because suddenly I was t- taking injections on my own as a very healthy individual or at least I thought in my head I was it was a painful 4 5 months of this roller coaster ride putting on 10 kgs losing one or two sad for myself till I decided to take matter in my own hands and do R&D and then i started experimenting with various nutrition plans i wouldn't call them a diet but nutrition plans of vegan um vegetarian raw raw and vegetarian water fasting juice fasting autoimmune protocol intermittent fasting something i still live by and i know you like it too and then i started empowering myself with knowledge and information and getting out of victim mentality and experimenting with what is working for me keto keto paleo uh everything and then i finally stumbled across carnivo and it started making me you know that feeling of andar se bharne lagte hain so it started making me feel that and i started feeling healthy again but the brain fog started vanishing victim mentality started going so i started empowering myself with 
everything that we are given literally foc free of cost because there's so much information on uh, the internet if you really use it wisely and i'm still experimenting like i just recently discovered it's better to have a coconut milk cappuccino and not an almond milk cappuccino for me so it's an ongoing process and i always say it's never okay. an oat milk cappuccino never never an oat milk cappuccino never, hmm. never. and it's still an ongoing process i firmly believe i am a work in progress and most of us are and this is a never ending journey so yeah that was how i started working on it you know you're so right um hospital food i often say is designed for bringing people to the hospital right i see like you know if you go to the waiting room of a hospital it is only junk food that is there yes. you don't get good quality food at all in any hospital and that's something that i've seen across the board is so true So you know when you are experimenting with these different nutrition plans, right? Like we'll break them down into different pillars. I'm guessing nutrition was one important aspect because you're controlling blood sugar. Hmm. How did you evaluate this works for me? This doesn't work for me. Through a lot of intuitive living, hmm. through a lot of uh, sitting with myself and my own intuitive living. Explain. Did you say that? Sorry, yeah. sitting with myself and a lot of uh, experimentation, energy levels, brain. fog cognitive function uh afternoon dips and also for me i'm driven f- like i don't like the thought of being hungry all the time if i am doing intentional fasting then it is that but if my food is supposed to make me happy and i'm having this avocado salad and i walk out the kitchen and i've literally taken two steps and i'm hungry again then there's something wrong in my food plan so through a lot of experimentation a lot of intuitive living a lot of uh, yeah these things to figure out what is really working for me and for me muscle is king it's uh, and muscle is expensive and muscle is an investment and for that i was i would like to do anything and everything which helps me put on muscle and carnivo worked really well in that aspect so that was a major deciding factor that i need to stick to this nutrition plan so when you uh, discovered carnivo right You must have had tons of people telling you this is a bad idea and things like that, right? Like, how did you navigate this? Because the stuff that you're doing typically is on the periphery of what people normally consider sane and not. That's true. That's a very interesting question. Thank you for asking me this. I always say I got a lot of beef for <laughs> eating <laughs> beef. It was uh, quite a bit of a roller coaster ride in itself because when I started having beef, I was suddenly people were like, "Ab Hindu ho ke beef kha rahe ho." and i was like you know what my body doesn't understand whether it's a hindu or a muslim or a sikh or an isai god did not send me down and say ki beta aap muslim ban ke jao ya sikh ban ke or you know be an uh, a hindu god wanted me to be healthy i know that he loves me he loves all of us and i know that for me to be healthy must uh, beef works and so if my body is happier and putting on muscle with beef i will eat it and so if people want to have their own personal agenda for it because you know they are not able to live their life completely and fully the way i do then it's a problem that they have and it's not my problem and so initially my following did dip and i was very consistent with what i was doing i was almost like a rebel putting up even more beef images even more bones and marrow yeah, and stuff like yes, that yeah, correct it, and eventually people understood i said those who will stay with me are they'll understand this is her life this is what she does and people who are not able to understand that are most welcome to leave it is what it is i'm not going to change my path to make others happy and slowly the following started going up and people understood this is what she does this is her life you recognize it you uh, are on with it beyond you're not you know that's the unfollow button you're most welcome to leave this is a free country so i that's how i handled it and it really worked for me So you know we had uh, one of India's top carnivore nutritionists on the podcast. Hmm. Her name is Sangeeta Iyer. Hmm. So we done an entire podcast. And have you ever spoken to her? Have you met her? Is she the boycott hair? I don't remember now if she is the boycott hair or not. Okay. Uh, but she is the one that picks beef with everybody. Hmm. So मतलब her Twitter is one full war scene there. Okay. And it's so interesting, right? Because people are so attached to the belief systems that they have about food. right so as a result it is always no you are wrong you are right and everyone thinks that there is one right way of mm. eating mm. right so it is this entire thing about understanding what is right for me might be different from what is right for you mm. and getting that in place makes a big difference um you know like we were talking about this whole thing about you know people think you're mad mm. right i remember when i started 
fasting nine years ago, ten years ago at that point of time, people thought Ashton, you're going to faint on the middle of the road. Mm. You're right. You're go- going to go crazy. Don't drive. Those are the kinds of things that people spoke about. Mm. Right. It's always that attitude first before people understand what it is that you're actually trying to do. True. I think in your case, Ashton, you were way, way, way ahead of your time yes. with everything. Totally geeking out. Yeah. So what you were doing ten years ago, people are slowly picking up now. Yeah. So it's it's really funny seeing this transition thing because I'm happy that it's taking place hmm. finally, right? Hmm. And we'll see what the next ten years hold. Hmm. Amazing. So one is this aspect of the food, hmm. right? The second part is you said muscle is king, hmm. right? What is it about muscle? Like, were you have you changed the way that you were working out earlier from what you're doing now? Is your fitness structure different? Uh, you mean after being diagnosed with type one? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, I CrossFit was make, raising my glucose because it's almost HIIT, and so I stopped doing it. I do slower, low, high. I do slower strength building sessions. I do more walks, which is uh, LISS. LISS, low intensity steady uh, state steady state cardio. I do yoga a lot more, and once in a while, just to break a good sweat which i was doing every day i do a good hiit session so yes that has changed for me but at the same time i wouldn't i would it's not a one size fits all like for some people coffee raises their glucose thank god for <laughs> me it doesn't raise my glucose i always of course add fat to it so the graph is pretty much constant but uh, somebody a, a type 1 might some type 1 might have an hiit work for them so it's again intuitive living and experimentation and you have to figure what works for you it is this so the question i had asked you was about this how do you know this works for me hmm. that intuitive living were you actually sitting down journaling that i tried this today this didn't work were you giving yourself a score on what your energy levels were hmm. were you doing any of that aspect or it was just a feeling when you were experimenting through the stages a bit of both hmm. I am a certified quantified bob. Hmm. So, so you I want like, to n- write down all the numbers. Yes, hmm. I would use whatever it takes gadgets, not all of them. There are some I uh, like and some I don't. Um I would quantify everything. I have a journal and I write my fasting glucose, I write what I did, how much water I drank, what I ate, what workout I did. In the workout what did I do? I write everything down so that I can always go back and say why did my glucose raise on that particular day and then I can make those changes and of course it's been 5 years now so that monitoring has become low i'm making a few changes now so i'm monitoring it again so every time i go through a change now every time i want to shuffle things around like now i'm adding a few vegetables to see how my body reacts so now i'm i'm monitoring it again but it's very important for you to monitor everything for you to be able to go back and say what raised the glucose what brought it down and because you can't always rely rely on your memory it's not fair so i think just monitoring everything helped a lot and of course intuitive living by knowing my energy levels by knowing my hunger state by knowing my sleep state you know all these things so interesting you know this aspect of quantifying and then still using your intuitiveness and that joining together makes mm. the difference yes okay so now let's jump into the biohacking part hmm. right i know that you are a big proponent of biohacking you talk about it on your social media you go for conferences about biohacking etc so tell me what was biohacking who introduced it to you how did you discover it and what are all the things that you've tried so far what biohacking is basically anything you are how can i explain all this in front of you like you know you're my guru in this you know so much but i'll try to answer with my version of what i think it is it's basically anything and everything that makes you live an optimized life gives you a vital state of mind and body an optimized life hmm. vital state of mind and body hmm. Hmm. and uh, a dear friend introduced it to me 4 years ago it was in sitting in conversations talking about crypto and biohacking and this and then i was like wait what is that you know and then i asked a few more questions and i went home opened my laptop and just started really absorbing everything that was available to me and then i said i must apply it because this resonates with me because at the root of it all it is basically playing with nature and your body both are available to you abundantly and if you use them wisely both are meant for great things i feel like nature and the human body are so intelligent ashton they are so intelligent we don't have the intelligence to use them wisely 
so i mean i feel like even with our brains and our bodies we haven't really completely explored what we are capable of we don't so, know how our hair grows hmm. we don't know how the body actually functions hmm. where is the intelligence in it hmm. right absolutely right we think we know these hmm. things hmm. and but there is so much to dig deeper into right and like they say right right now I, i think human intelligence we are just using about what 2% of our brains so imagine what the rest 98% can do so there's still so much more to explore but my take on biohacking is using your nature and your body using the nature that's available to you and your body wisely i'm not into heavy gadgets and you know i know there are some biohackers out there who are like you know what we biohack our sleep and we sleep only 3 hours a day and we're functioning so well and i'm like no you're basically moving away from the essence of it all the only way you can biohack your sleep is by giving yourself quality and quantity sleep you know that's the only way you can buy short term okay maybe with tequila or with coffee or with i don't know whatever floats your boat you know but uh, it's not the solution and so my aim with people around me and people who are are looking at what i'm doing is to say use these things wisely for your sleep for your workouts and see the results you don't really need really high end gadgets and you know things you can start small and then slowly level up as you go you know it's so nice that you're saying this because whenever we think biohacking we automatically think technology hmm. right the whole hacking thought means technology hmm. but there are so many aspects that are completely free to do hmm. right for example all the breathing practices that are that fall into biohacking are actually free free to do that's right? what i'm saying Air your body there. your body yeah and um, i remember this conversation i had long time ago that the yogis were one of the first biohackers right because all the stuff that you do in yoga is nothing but a form of biohacking you're trying mm. to optimize your body for its functioning exactly so like i said you know just nature and your body if you use these two wisely you don't really need much else so uh, yeah and then your your biohacking journey started with what what do you what would you consider as your first habit or practice that is a proper biohack I think I started earthing okay. aggressively like every morning I would just uh, walk on grass with that little dew and just really talk to earth under me I don't know if it makes sense it sounds a little woo woo but I just really started uh, connecting with earth mother you know that was my first step again with the pun intended and after that I got myself a sauna and I started doing sauna sessions every morning hmm. and started increasing the time slowly And why did you come to the sauna? Oh, by the way, I found a nice uh, grounding mat huh, for the bed in case you want one. So I'll, okay, I'll send it, send a link to you. Why did you um, find the sauna? Why did you settle on a sauna as the next step? I understood that it's a great hermetic stressor, and I had to push the limits of my body to kind of start healing the mitochondria from in from within. And usually, people go in for the steam room, but I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not very good with my technical. Uh, knowledge i think the steam usually affects your outer skin and makes you break a sweat and it doesn't really go into the body and heal the mitochondria and the sauna does that and i could see great res- results from uh, using the sauna i was able to manage my glucose really well i could sleep better you could actually see a dip in glucose 100% hmm. 100% image it and is it because the heart rate increases do you notice your heart rate increasing yes. in the sauna yes hmm. heart rate would increase you would break a sweat you would you would sweat out the toxins hmm. so that helped and then i started. also the other thing with steam sorry hmm. is that um, you don't know what the condition of the steam room is in hmm. so you don't know what mold might be forming hmm. in the in the boilers etc so you don't know what you're breathing in That's so true. from a, from a Health point of view, that is the thing that I would be more worried about in a steam compared to a sauna. Okay. Sauna yeah. has dry heat, and also the kind that you have has red light. Hmm. So that gives a different form of um, red light therapy to your body as well. Yeah, which is a great healing modality in itself. So Correct. you're basically uh, multitasking in the sauna. Yeah. So then I got myself a red light panel. I uh, what are the bio hacks that I started immediately was. What did you feel after the red light panel? Did did you feel a difference or I, was it? I did actually, you know, I d- and I don't think it's placebo because I'm very in tune with my body and how I'm feeling, and I could really feel the red light helping with my skin, my hair, my energy levels, my recovery after post workout recovery, my sleep, and now as and how we are researching more on red light, there are way more benefits out there, not just these. So uh, I started journaling, I started meditation, I started. 
another thing which is available to us like you what i do is i wake up in the morning and i put on chants i would just go on youtube and see what i'm feeling that day and luckily for us you know we are so much is available to us and that's why i say the internet is such a good medium if we use it wisely there are these binaural beats i'm i i think i i would like to hear from you which ones but there are these uh, you know heal your sacral chakra and that's where the pancreas are heal your heart chakra your crown chakra your throat chakra what are you feeling that day you know your difficult you're finding it difficult to have a conversation with your boss which you've been putting off just put heal your throat chakra and see how you're feeling you know dig into it dwell into it and just so that really helps me it sets the tone for the day and you do this uh, in the morning after grounding with grounding after journaling what would your morning schedule look like my morning routine i basically a uh, typical day i would wake up around 4 am i would have salt water i would make coffee in 45 minutes actually 30 <laughs> and uh, instantly <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean and then i would have it with coconut milk good quality coffee with coconut milk and read i love reading i would dedicate two hours to reading and then the sun comes out slowly and i would open out the house light my incense sticks play the chants and uh, then i would sit down to journal in front of my red light panel so that's habit stacking and uh, once i've done with i'm done with that that's when i go out because now the sun is um well risen and that, then i start earthing and then what do i do uh usually mostly after that i take mobi for a walk and come back go for my yoga class do a strength training session have some good quality protein and then it's it's around this 11. is around what time so what time would you have your first meal uh around you're not 11. fasting right now i'm not fasting hmm. no because you've done your coconut milk and all of that yeah hmm. so uh, 11 am i would have protein shake and this is usually my 4 am to 11 am schedule if i have a tight day then i would squeeze all of this i would not go to the gym to work out outside the house i would do a quick session at home i would not go for the yoga class and just maybe practice some inversions at home but mostly why inversions i love inversions hmm. i feel like the blood foot flow to the face or uh, so face brain you know everything is so invigorating for me and it really works on my core on my arm strength on my legs everything together at once hmm. so it's time saving and it gives me a high every time i'm able to crack a good inversion it feels better nice is a skill unlocked yeah it feels powerful so hmm. first thing in the morning you're like okay you know this is powerful hmm. champion yeah hmm. champion mentality <laughs> so usually this is my routine i'll either elongate it or squeeze it depending on how much time i have in that day and then um ice bath ka we forgot yes i was just going to tell hmm. you i totally forgot the ice bath how could i forget so we met because of the ice yeah, bath yeah hmm. and now you must come over because i have this ice bath which you put on and it in 45 minutes it cools the water to 4 degrees so there's Fantastic. no dunking of the ice and there's no farmers walk no getting ice from no, the from market the wheelbarrow is nothing <laughs> nothing hmm. so uh, yeah i wake up and i first thing i do is immediately put the ice bath on because i know it's going to take 45 minutes to cool to that temperature and sit and read and i try to have my coffee after the ice bath because i want the dopamine hit from the ice bath and not the coffee hmm. so yeah that definitely So what the uh, so what is the difference that you felt with the ice bath and difference between that between the ice bath and the sauna So the ice bath first thing in the morning the first effect is it's a win you had against yourself you know you have claimed your position in your own heart and your own mind that you are a champion that champion mentality totally comes through the minute you have done those 4 minutes on a daily basis i try to do 4 minutes hmm. on sunday i'll do a good long At a go yes hmm. yes and on a sunday <clears throat> I'll do contrast therapy and do three rounds of ice bath sauna, ice bath sauna. So, firstly, the champion mentality. Second, uh, I now I'm ch- making this change. I'm trying to break the thermal layer when I'm inside because I cannot just sit like this hmm. because then you're constantly it, moving. Yeah. So doing that, um, I also listen to something at the same time, so that helps. And inflammation, the root cause of everything of what I understand in life is inflammation. and so when i'm doing my ice bath i'm working on reducing my inflammation so for me that's very helpful and cognitive function better memory better sleep better skin better hair 
आई मीन द यू वुड नो द इफेक्ट्स ऑफ आइस बाथ तो आर लाइक मैनिफोल्ड दे अमेजिंग इट्स फैंटास्टिक इट्स नॉट जस्ट फॉर मसल रिकवरी लाइक यू नॉर्मली थिंक ऑफ इट वेन वी यू नो वेन वी थॉक अबाउट एथलीट्स डूइंग आइस बाथ राइट आई थिंक सो मच ऑफ द आइस बाथ इज साइकोलॉजिकल राइट It is. Are you enjoying it? Hmm. Right. Remember when we did it? I said, "Are you enjoying it? Why is why is frowning? Come on, smile inside, right? Yeah. You have to you have to psych yourself up into yes. that feeling of are you enjoying it or not? Yes. Otherwise, it is just like oh, I'm struggling. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. Yes. And I think that teaches you a lot about life as well, right? When life throws you problems, are you smiling at them or are you like I'm struggling? I'm struggling. I'm struggling. True. So true. What else would you add, Ashton, to this stack? As in, not the uh, habits, but the ice bath benefits. So, to what ice baths can do to us. Right. Um, so, what I would do is I would not do an ice bath immediately after a workout. So, right. let's do the way that I would not, hmm. right? Because I want the blood flow from the workout, and hmm. I want the stress from the workout hmm. instead of trying to dampen it. So, hmm. many gyms have ice baths, hmm. and you would ne- normally do a workout and then go to the, do an hmm. ice bath. I would suggest not doing that, hmm. right? Um another way that I would use the ice bath is during your workout. Hmm. Okay so in the workout while you're doing your workout dip your hands into the ice hmm. while you are in the mid- middle of your set. Hmm. So the cold recovers your body hmm. and your muscle faster so hmm. that you can push on the next set. Hmm. That's something that else I would probably use the hmm. ice bath for. But apart from that there are different ways of doing it like what you've been doing recently I've been noticing on your hmm. stories is that even if you don't have a full ice bath hmm. dipping your legs in cold water hmm. ice water mm. dipping your face in ice water gets a similar reaction than a full body emotion mm. so i think mm. those are the things that i would probably mm. add to this ha so that's adding to the habit stack but what are the other benefits anything i missed out no i think you got it all yeah yeah yeah, yeah because it improves circulation for mm. sure mm. right the big thing is um, vasoconstriction mm. and vasodilation so mm. to understand this is basically our veins branch out into capillaries mm. capillaries are what supplies your blood and oxygen and nutrients to all the little little parts of your body so mm. we have millions of capillaries in our body mm. now each capillary has a muscle around them mm. right so this muscle needs to know how to open and close because that is what the muscle is used for mm. and if you don't use a muscle it atrophies and goes away mm. Most of us have atrophied capillaries because we've never used them. We stay in air-conditioned environments. Mm. We never expose ourselves to extremes. Mm. So when we do this, especially in the sauna and in the ice bath, we are teaching ourselves vasoconstriction, vaso dilation. Mm. So you'll notice when you get into the ice bath, the first thing that happens is that you start feeling pain. Mm. Right? That is the vasoconstriction. Mm. Then suddenly you realize that the pain has disappeared, and suddenly you start feeling warm. Mm. Right? That is when your vaso dilation takes place, and now your body is again reheating itself mm. up. So it's interesting to see those aspects taking place. So that's what I would typically use it for. Mm. Yeah, and you're very right about using it, uh, not using it post workout, which also basically with the ice bath you need to know what you are using it for. And in my case, I'm always on a muscle building spree, and I think everybody should be, and that's why I would never do it after a workout. It's usually first thing in the morning to get the dopamine hit and work on the inflammation. It'll wake you up. Yeah, and wake you up and feel powerful and champion mentality and you know all of that. Um, yeah, I mean we have a common friend and she had been using it post her workout and we had this conversation a few weeks ago and I'm like. What are you doing? That's the worst time to do it, and she was so bummed. She was <laughs> like, like, "I wasted this entire yeah. time." Yeah, <laughs> she was like, and she's also in the hustle for muscle situation. So she was like, "Firstly, my muscle has not. I have not my, let my muscle do what it could do, hmm. and I have been work doing all the hard work of farmers' walk, dunking the ice, taking that time out. So poor thing, she was very disappointed when she understood that that's not the right time to do it. Correct. Poor thing. Arey, 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 arey. So what else have you been experimenting with that you want to add on to your? Um, your biohacking stack i have been experimenting with supplements mm. and with plant medicine okay and with the uh, microdosing of plant medicine and with timings of the ice bath and the sauna which as you were saying you saw i recently shifted the timings tell I me about the supplements and tell me about the plant medicines uh supplementation i am adding more of mushrooms mm. uh tinctures i'm doing more chaga more lion's mane more reishi and uh, adding uh inositol adding uh, it, that's the word right inositol i don't know what inositol is what is inositol yeah it's very good for cognitive function okay and i added 5 htp hmm. 
I added more ashwagandha. Hmm. I'm um uh I'll have to think through. Uh I recently added more glycine. Mhm. And turmeric it's crazy. What an underestimated herb. I mean, I knew it was very beneficial but recently randomly I just uh googled top anti-aging hacks and the first thing that <laughs> came, <laughs> came up was turmeric. Hmm. Do you want to like explain that? I do not get a chance to read the whole thing, but it said turmeric. Turmeric primarily anti-inflammatory. Hmm. Right, so like you said, inflammation is the main thing that hmm. gets us. So, so curcumin in in turmeric is the main one that reduces your inflammation, hmm. and uh, it's natural. So, which is why it's made a big hoo ha about. Hmm. But the thing is that you need a lot of turmeric hmm. in order to get that benefit. Yes, it is almost a tablespoon or teaspoon. It's a I think two teaspoons of turmeric that hmm. you need uh, hmm. the amount. So it's actually a curcumin extract. could be beneficial hmm. but away, uh, but however when you extract curcumin you don't know what are the other molecules in turmeric that you're missing out on hmm. so see this is the thing with with supplementation right you have to understand the hmm. various aspects of it hmm. and then take a call on it hmm. and chances are you might get it right chances are you might get it wrong hmm. but it's all experimenting and seeing how you feel at the end of the day Yes. You'll notice, for example, when you start supplementing with turmeric, maybe a uh, niggling pain that you've had for the longest time suddenly disappears, mm. right? So it's those kinds of things that you will notice. In we did an entire podcast on turmeric. We had really? uh, a person who owns this company called the Golden Hug. Okay. So Nature and Thought is the company, and they have this turmeric supplement called Golden Hug, mm. and it's a very interesting supplement altogether. So she was on discussing turmeric and how the benefits and understanding it. So in the golden hug was the composition with curcumin and something else? No, no. So it's a very strong turmeric okay. extract. It's actually a tiny pill. Okay. With the same benefit as those two teaspoons or tablespoons I forget of turmeric. Turmeric, and and uh, the bioavailability for it because the key thing is the bioavailability of turmeric. Turmeric, and we must add about the usage of pepper with turmeric. Right. So pepper again increases the. Hmm. bodily uh, metabolic rate so as a result it gets absorbed uh, it absorbs the turmeric hmm. so similarly pepper to most supplements will absorb the supplement faster okay and the, however curcumin is absorbed in the presence of fat so like we know vitamin d is a fat soluble hmm. vitamin the same way curcumin is fat soluble so adding ghee to your turmeric chai adding hmm. pepper to your turmeric chai is what basically builds and pulls the curcumin out of the out turmeric out of the turmeric and helps the body absorb the benefits of, of curcumin of the curcumin Yeah, so uh, experimenting with curcumin, uh, I realized that I was like, I I make my own bone broth and I add a lot of curcumin, but that's not enough still. So I've started taking curcumin supplements. I have started taking glycine. I have uh, doubled the dose of magnesium, and uh, again, I'm figuring out how the whole magnesium game works because, like you know, there's so many forms and there's so many times to. Are you continuing with berberine? Not continuing with berberine. I just recently, from my this trip in Chennai, mm. got more berberine. I've okay. given it a break, but I am restarting. And uh, what else? Uh, a lot more protein. Mm-hmm. A lot more magnesium, inositol, glycine. Uh, anything that you would, I mean, everything. L-carnitine. L-carnitine, yes. Glutathione, glutamine. Mm. Mm. I do a lot of supplements. It's kind of crazy. I. uh yeah yeah on, on one instagram live i took out my entire dabba of supplements yes, <laughs> i have seen <laughs> ashton's collection of books and supplementation is uh, a beauty to look at <laughs> it freaks me out but it is now is basically my gym bag huh. so my yes. gym bag is my supplements and yeah. whatever i need to put inside goes around with me wherever i yeah. go so that's the way that i've cracked this missing supplements problem yeah I recently met Joe Cohen. Hmm. He is Mr. Biohacker on social media, and he has hundred supplements a day. There you go. So he cannot really carry the gym bag with hundred supplements because that itself would be like three gym bags. So he had this beautiful box with sections in it, and you in one because आजकल जो हमें medicine pill मिलती है उसमें आप एक-एक ही रख सकते हो. At the most, I think three, four. So he had this box like a protein shake box, and they were deep sockets. and every socket he could put 100 tablets so every day after lunch or after dinner he would take out the day stack and the night stack so after lunch obviously the day stack and after dinner the night stack and yeah his supplementation game was right up there yeah. just imagine and supplements are expensive right just imagine the amount that yes it, it takes to be yes. in that yeah amazing 
Yeah, and uh, another supplement that I recently added was vitamin D. It's crazy mm. that I live in Goa and I literally go and sit in the sun and I'm a few shades darker and I love taking the sun and I was still low on vitamin D. Yeah. Can you imagine it was crazy? I was quite surprised. I was like then I need to tell people main to Goa mein rehti hu aur itna dhoop leti hu phir bhi I'm low. And what are you guys in cities yeah, doing? Yeah, please like you know. So that's something that we must look into and must include, you know, no matter what your blood work says. You know, but that's also the thing, right? So many people go and sit in the sun after putting sunblock. Hmm. Oh god. Right. So then you put the sunblock and then you want to go sit in the sun for the vitamin D. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Right. So you have to give that 20 minutes of no sunblock time followed by sunblock time in order for it to take place. I mean, ideally there should be no sunblock time, but uh like there should be no sunscreen time. Correct. I haven't worn a sunscreen in years. Yeah. So you know the funda of the sunglasses and sunscreen. Yeah, we, ideally you should not wear sunglasses in the day as well. Correct, yeah, correct. I don't. Right, so it's this thing. It's called sunglasses, but huh. ideally you should not be wearing them in the sun because they block the light of the sun onto your eyes, yes. which is what you need. Yes. Right. So there's so much that we need to tweak, and we need to do these conversations, yeah, and yeah. put them out. I I feel like sometimes I want to shake people up, and there's this girl I met recently. She's from Canada, and she's like, I wear sunscreen and go to sleep, and I was like. like how do i explain this to her like you know so damaging like why would you want to do that and so there are all levels of people doing all levels of work how do you explain like this is not how it should be next deadly book for you to read is toxin solution okay i want to write all these things down the autoimmune and the toxin autoimmune solution autoimmune solution tox toxin what what did i say the toxin you said toxin solution toxin solution yeah. so basically the toxin one is crazy it was one of the books that i stopped reading like in 20% of the book. Oh really? It was just so scary, right? This is toxic, this is toxic, this is toxic, this is toxic. Mm. Everything that we were doing was toxic. Mm. Your chair is trying to kill you. Your this is trying to huh. kill you, right? So it was that mentality so I said, "Boss, it's trying to scare me. I'm not going to read this mm. book." Mm. Then I went back slowly and read the entire book just to understand what aspect of the sofa is trying to kill me. Yeah. <laughs> right? What aspect of this is trying to And then you suddenly realize the amount of damaging toxins we have around us yes. and in the creams and things that we put on our body. Very good topic that you brought up. Yes so basically I What's I, your skincare routine? You are glowing Mega. Really? Thank you. I'm underslept and overworked. <laughs> <laughs> That is the secret you've heard it here on the podcast. Oh. Undersleep, overwork and you'll have glowing skin. Uh, today is one of those days where I'm in Bombay and trying to fit too many things so that I can go back to my cave in Goa. But uh, low toxic load in my life. I have made that change for the last 3 years. I have not used a stobot toothpaste for the last 3 years. What do you use? I make my own. How? Uh, coconut oil mm. and peppermint oil and clove oil, and that's one. Another thing. But I just with oil, you brush or you put a powder or something. These things are there in mm. it. Mm. Then the other one I have is there is this dant manjin that comes. It's black in color, so mm. it has activated charcoal, and uh, camphor. I think camphor. It has. You will. Ne- I will give you. You cow dung. Mm. Ah, <laughs> lovely. So it has like some amount of cow dung and everything, and I mix that powder with coconut oil. Hmm. So I just dip my toothbrush, toothbrush in hmm. it, a little bit of it, and I'm good to go. Hmm. And I get my dental checkup done every six months to be sure that what I'm doing because nobody else is doing this right. So we don't have evidence of whether this is going to work or not. Exactly. So I, yeah. Yeah. So I have to keep checking so that if I tell others to do this, I know what I'm talking about. So no stobot toothpaste. So you start your day with shit. so that nobody can add it to you afterwards exactly, i love it exactly yeah and then like, you've ab- finished all your bullshit for the day exactly mm. like i'm unbreakable after what i've just done to myself <laughs> <laughs> so you know so that really works so no stobot toothpaste i do not have a body wash i do not have a body lotion i do not have a stobot face cream or oil uh my skincare routine is a lot of poke fat internally and externally mm-hmm. so that really works for me And uh, so, what do you use for soap? What do you use for shampoo? Shampoo and conditioner. I'm still using Stobot. I haven't been able to nail how to wash my hair and remove the oil that I love putting in a homemade shampoo. Correct. But so those are still. And Stobot. conditioner is difficult to find. Hmm. But conditioner again, I've hacked a good recipe: coconut milk hmm. with uh, cooked rice, just grind it, and it's a nice, smooth consistency, and it's so nourishing for the hair. Our common friend has also been using it, and she's loving it. Yeah. And she has great hair already. Hmm. So that is that really works. Are we calling a common friend? We can use names on. Okay, Sonia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she'll also be like, "Oh, they're talking about me." Yeah, yeah, we're talking about Sonia. Huh? So, uh, shampoo. I've not been able to understand how. 
बट I just you, I make my own body oils I make my own face oils and so I know what's going into my body through my skin which is again the largest organ that we have so I am trying to do low toxic load on my body internally and externally yeah that is the key right hmm. so in the toxin solution they say no more than four products on your body hmm right so for a guy it would have been shaving cream would be one hmm. soap would have been one hmm. so you already shot your bolt on half of them hmm. toothpaste a second so you're done yeah. right so then what else you get exactly and to replace soap or body wash i can give you a recipe so we all make coffee at home right i mean i have used up uh, coffee which i i have used up coffee that we brew from the coffee say? grounds the coffee grounds so just that with coconut milk or coconut oil or just regular milk mix it up and that's a great scrub or like my bathroom but literally but you need something to take off that oil no no but wh- why do you need to take the oil off huh? your skin you just leave it on no the oil and the scrub mix karke you put it you wash it off it will just leave a little bit of a sheen right mm. which is great because your skin is healthy that way and my bathroom actually looks more like a kitchen than the kitchen because there's salt there's sugar there's coconut uh, oil there's used up uh, coffee beans and every day it's on mere mood pe ki what do i feel like sometimes i'll just take the sugar and coconut oil and mix it and i'm good to go Lovely. sometimes i'll just do a salt bath which everybody must do anyway because it's a great energy cleanse and uh, so yeah i don't have a body wash my my room looks my bathroom exactly sesame seed oil yeah. Uh, oil pulling oil pulling ka yeah. coconut oil is yeah. there there what is the other thing then there's almond oil mm. right all the essential oils yeah. in the bathroom exactly. perfect that's what you need you don't really need much else if you just have all these things mm. so. i accept joked and say that my one travel hack mm. is wherever you go you carry coconut oil mm. right you forgot your brush ha huh. coconut oil pulling huh. correct you forgot hair gel coconut mm. in the hair mm. right you're hungry eat the coconut oil <laughs> it's like do keto everything coconut oil you are totally talking my language i literally just made a post day before about the one thing i never forget to carry is always coconut oil in my coffee in the morning on my face on my body in my hair and even in the shower so hmm. when i'm traveling and i'm in the hotel i'll tell them give me a bowl of salt and i keep that in the bathroom with the coconut oil so that's my body wash and Like literally, coconut oil is the answer to everything in my life. Love it, and coconutty food. via. Yeah, coconutty. It's mm. such an interesting nut. <laughs> <laughs> coconut milk to start the day. Lovely. Mm. All right. So biohacking. Me coming back to the biohacking topic. What else you talking about? Plant uh, medicine. What is that? Yes, I've recently started exploring with plant medicine, which would be mushrooms, which would be ayahuasca ceremonies, and uh, it's helped me a lot. and i don't know if it's for everybody you have to be open to it and you have to explore it to see how your experience was and it's always it's not always going to be the same but um, i'm experimenting with these i uh, want to eventually microdose with some of them and see how with mushroom or ayahuasca and uh, still very new to it but loving what it's doing because if your mind and body are not connected it's no matter what you do it's not going to help so that's with plant medicine still a little new to it So still experimenting yes. with the plant medicine aspect of it. Lovely. Anything else on the horizon that you're excited about trying that's coming up soon? Mm. What about meditation and things like that? Do you meditate? Ah, uh, what is meditation really? You know, for ev- for uh, for everybody it's so different. Sometimes for me a med- meditation session can be a good nice workout. Sometimes it can be a hearty conversation with a friend because anything that settles you, calms you according to me is meditation. I honestly find it a little difficult to sit in silence uh for me it's more therapeutic when i'm able to have a good conversation with a friend or do a long walk in silence or a nice long drive or a good workout session so right now i'm experimenting with what meditation is and uh, no i don't really sit alone in silence and no Okay, lovely. So it's not sitting alone in silence, but you're trying to explore different aspects of meditation hmm. through practices that you're doing through the day. In any case, hmm. lovely. Meka, anything else that you want to say off the top of your mind? Because we're thinking of what else can we do biohacking wise? Ah, uh, nature. A hmm. lot of earthing. A lot of sun therapy. If you are close to the beach, a lot of you know sand, water, air, sunshine, salt therapy. Ah, hmm. uh, even our houses. 
every single day we use a little bit of salt it could be your table salt it doesn't have to be the himalayan salt or the rock salt but some amount of salt in your sweeping the house hmm. when you sweep the house aapne ek bar you know you broom it and then you sweep it so i always add a little salt in that i find that the energy of the house stays very um pure and uh, undisturbed so that is one thing i you know everybody has salt at home another thing i think we haven't really discussed is sleep mm. and it's such an important component such an underestimated healing tool that all of us have available readily and uh, for me sleep hygiene is really important little things again using nature and body i uh, have little practices that help me sleep better and post 6 pm i would never have overhead lights like whatever the eye level is i would have dimmed out lights and either have those mirchi lights or candles so that you slowly start giving your body the signal that it's time to go to sleep and that helps if you do have to use your phone because i understand you know 6 pm i cannot i don't do it i don't put my phone down at 6 pm and say ki bhai main to 9 10 baje soungi but i will not touch my phone it's not possible so if you can wear blue light blockers it will keep your circadian rhythm intact if you can use a little bit of lavender oil on your pillow case it really helps you sleep better if you can take a, a sauna session red light therapy before your sleep time great if not that's okay but a warm shower with a little salt or without salt will help keep sleeping in a cooler room will help compared to sleeping in a warmer room and you'll always notice that you're well rested when the room is a little more cooler uh changing your bed sheets at least like within 3 days is important because we collect a lot of germs on the bed on the bed sheet and we don't often do that we forget to so it's important to keep changing the bed sheets recently i started using a silk pillow case it's easily available on amazon just type silk pillow case and it comes up a low cost investment but really good for your skin and hair and these kind of practices have really been helping me sleep better and when we sleep better everything works better i have noticed personally for me when i sleep better i don't crave carbs the next day i my skin looks better my hair looks better my energy levels are higher i don't have brain fog i'm drinking enough water i have the energy levels to work out i have great muscle recovery when i'm sleeping well ideally we should be sleeping anywhere between 6 to 8 hours on a regular basis so uh, that is important so these practices almost non negotiable for you 100% Amazing. So, and you sleep by what time? Nine ish, ten ish? Yes, nine ish. Nine ish? Yeah. Out. Yeah, like by by seven thirty eight, I'm not available to pick up calls or to have a conversation with hmm. because I don't want anything to upset my nervous system at that point. I want to regulate my nervous system, you know, start preparing to go into sleep mode by nine nine thirty. I would read something, or I would, you know, maybe even scroll Instagram for ten fifteen minutes. It's okay. It's my reset time, not reset. Sorry, my Down time, time, down my time. down time, hmm. and by nine nine thirty, lights out. Amazing! I think this is fantastic. I love this conversation with you, Mika. Thank you so much for coming down to the studio and recording this podcast with us. It's been a long time pending. Yes. It finally happened. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me over, Ashton. I have so much to learn from you. So it was good to exchange. a few things i know but i still have so much to learn from you okay so meka are there places where people can connect and continue this conversation where can they learn all this fantastic stuff that you're doing uh my social media handle is called meka gupta official and that's where i think uh, we are reachable awesome all right thank you so much for coming thank you thank you